probably need external hard drive. Well, you came to the right place because I'm gonna help you choose the right one for you. If you started looking around, you know that there's a lot of options out there and you have to choose between things like brand, size, capacity, speed, interface, warranty and of course price. I mean, to make things easier, I could just say, go to the store, get a Samsung portable, uh, one terabyte SSD and problem solved. But if you don't have that kind of money, then well, there's still plenty of options on a budget. To make choice easier, it's a great idea to understand what a backup hard drive is. Let's go over a few things people often ask when they're choosing their backup storage device. Question one, does physical size matter? Well, yes and no. One thing you need to know is that the 2.5 hard drive, which are the small ones, have a limit of four terabytes capacity. And most of the time you will see only two terabytes at the retail store. Four terabytes do exist, but they're just not as common and they tend to be slightly more expensive. On the other hand, the 3.5 inch have a whopping 14 terabytes in space capacity at this moment. Mind blowing. And of course, there are additional things you need to know about size, but we'll talk about this later in the video. Question two, does hard drive RPM really matter? Well, in general, faster RPM hard drives are considered faster and better. However, when it comes to portable hard drives, the speed of RPMs isn't really that important and I'll explain why a little later on. Question number three, does brand name matter? Yes, try to stick with brand names like Samsung, Seagate, Western Digital. The data is important so you want to keep it in a reliable hard drive. Question number four, which connection interface should I be getting? USB 2.0, 3.0, Thunderbolt, USB-C? Well, Thunderbolt and USB-C tend to have the fastest transfer speeds, however, they're fairly expensive and rare at the moment. USB 3.0 on the other hand is are fairly common those days. Most computers have the port, they're fairly priced, fairly cheap and they have fair speeds. You can still use USB 2.0 that are still being used by a lot of people. However, the downside is that if you're transferring large files it can make a huge difference. But if you're looking to save a few bucks, USB 2.0 probably will be the cheapest. Question number five, what size hard drive should I get? Well, it really depends on how much data you need to back up. However, the sweet spot is between two and four terabytes. The reason for that is they're the most fairly priced hard drives, two and four terabytes, versus if you go higher, they tend to be a lot more expensive. Also, you don't want to go too high just because if you're saving all this data on one drive and it fails, you will lose all your data. It's better to have two two terabyte hard drives than one four terabytes. In that case, if one of them fails, you only lose half of your data and of course half of the price. Question number six, warranty. Warranty is only important to see how reliable the manufacturer thinks the hard drive is. It's really not a good indicator if the hard drive is reliable or not, but it gives you an idea. The thing is, this is an external hard drive, which is not going to be used 24-7, it's going to be used once in a while. So chances are, your hard drive, even if it's not the best reliable hard drive, it will still outlast the manufacturer's warranty. Question number seven, are there any hard drives I should stay away from? Well, yes, actually there is one. They're so-called 2.5 inch fats. What it is here, it looks almost something like this. What it is, is actually two hard drives that are actually stacked on top of each other and they're connected into one in a RAID 0 format. So they look to your computer like a one hard drive. But what it is, is RAID 0 strips your data into two hard drives, so one file can be stripped into two. The problem with that is if one of those hard drives fail, all your data is gone. And that's not a situation you want to be stuck in. Let's get back into speed. I mentioned earlier that the hard drive RPM doesn't really matter, and that is true in a fact. The thing is, we don't know what kind of hard drives are actually installed in those black boxes and manufacturers tend to change them constantly so you really even if you bought one that's that's uh, 1500 rpms you know you buy one the six months later from somewhere else and it's exactly the same model and everything but it will be a completely different drive and manufacturers do that on purposely because they tend to load the low, sort of lower performance or lower end hard drives into those boxes to minimize the price versus keep the high end for for the retails and enterprise. 
another reason that speed doesn't really matter is because the cable has limitations of its transfer speed. So sure, you can go with a USB-C and Thunderbolt. However, the problem with that is that there's only very few computers actually support it right now. You can buy extension ports and everything and all the cards, IO cards. However, you ideally you want to have at least two devices that actually are capable to, to accept your interface. The reason for that is if your main system fails, you want to be able to actually access your data from another system. There's also alternatives. I mean, you can also go with solid state drive. However, the price of a solid state drive is fairly high right now. Uh, USB stick, it's fairly priced. However, you know, it has limitations of, you know, it's really hard to find even a half a terabyte of, of a space at a reasonable price. And of course, you can use a docking station. What it is here is actually, I can take a regular hard drive that I might have laying around somewhere plug it in and it will connect to my computer and use that as my backup. And those docking stations, they, they usually price around $40 to $60, so they're not that expensive. So let's get to the point, which one would I recommend? Well, I would recommend a small 2.5 inch hard drive. One, they're fairly small, they require only one cable to connect to your computer, and they're fairly priced similar as a big one. The only downside is the limit is maximum four terabytes at the moment. The big ones, however, if you need to more space, you know, you can go up to 14 terabytes on the big ones. However, they do require additional power supply to power them. And so they're not as uh, portable as the 2.5 inch one, which is, that's all you really need. The cable, the drive, you can even put it in your pocket and be on your way. So 2.5 would probably be my choice. So there are a lot of choices and I hope I point you in the right direction. Unfortunately, you're gonna be the one who's gonna be making the last choice. So just remember that even though a solid state or in Thunderbolt and USB-C are the best out of all of them, they may not be the right choice because of its connectivity or its size or its price. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like if you like this video, click dislike if you don't like the video, if you have any comments, leave them below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Hope to see you soon.